Hey guys, welcome to the second part of this two-part lecture on how budgetary measures can help achieve external stability through decreasing the CAD. So what we're going to talk about in this lecture is how an increase in the savings ratio can one, slow aggregate demand and two, decrease net interest repayments. All of which will contribute to a healthier current account deficit. So we know that the current account deficit is made is made up of a deficit in the net goods and services balance and a deficit primarily in our primary incomes. And as we know, the primary incomes relate to this interest repayments overseas on borrowings. So we're going to look at how an increase in budgetary measures can increase, um, sorry, an increase in savings ratio due to budgetary measures can decrease our deficit. Okay, so we know that budgetary policy can be split up into two stabilizers, automatic stabilizers and discretionary stabilizers. Automatic stabilizers being transfer payments and taxation. So as we can see that transfer payments and taxation don't really affect our savings ratio. So it must be the discretionary measures implemented by the government in order to increase uh, or encourage more savings. So we're going to look at these, a few of these discretionary measures to increase our savings ratio. Okay, so we have one which was recently implemented, tax advantages for superannuation savings. So super is a major form of savings in this nation, and as we know, superannuation is directly contributed by your employee to your superannuation fund, and you can take that out once you retire. So what the government implemented was that once you reach the age of 60, you can take super out for free. You can take your super out tax-free. So before that, you could take your super out whenever after you retire, and but you have to pay a tax in order to take your super out. But now, to encourage people to keep their money in their superannuation savings, the, the government has implemented this policy change and said, OK, if you leave your super until you turn 60, you can take your super out for free. The second important change in discretionary measures is this superannuation co-contribution scheme. So what this means is that sometimes only your employers contribute to your super. However, if you make dollar contributions to your own super, super fund, the government will match it. So if you put, say, $100 into your super fund, the government would then put another $100 into your super fund. And this is for, this is to encourage retirement funds for low and middle income earners. So this is a long-term project the government has so as to reduce the amount of transfer payments they have to pay out to low and middle income earners once they retire. Thirdly, we have a compulsory superannuation guarantee charge. And this is the um, normal or the typical type of super that we, we uh, think of is when the employers pay you for your work and they contribute to your superannuation fund. And the government's goal is to increase this from 9% of your income to 12% of the income by 2019. So this this aim is to increase worker savings that can be drawn from retirement. And this is also a long-term goal so as to um, encourage people not to use government transfer payments in the long term. So what advantages do, do these three 
major discretionary measures have on our savings pool and therefore external stability. Okay, I'm just going to rub this out. We're going to focus on how an increase in the national savings pool can, in fact, decrease our current account deficit. Right, so, assume for the minute that our, we have low national savings, and at the moment in Australia, we do have low national savings. Okay, so, we're going to look at this, this part here first. So, we're going to look at point two before we look at point one. So, low national savings. And so, what happens when the economy goes into a downturn is that the government must borrow overseas to fund deficits. Okay, so we have three options. One, the government borrows from the private sector. Two, the government borrows overseas. Or a very expansionary measure is to ask the RBA to print more money. But the government won't do that, so they're going to borrow from overseas. And this, when they borrow from overseas, will cause increase in CAD. So this represents a capital inflow, so it will be recorded as a credit in our capital and financial accounts. However, interest repayments will be calculated as a debit in this net primary incomes account of our current account. So what happens is that this would, in fact, um, create a movement towards a larger current account deficit. And again, when we accumulate these current account deficits, this will result in a larger net foreign debt. And this is all detrimental to the achievement of this goal of external stability. So when we do have large national savings, or high, high levels of savings, we can see that the government has no need to borrow overseas. So we're just going to put across here. And they can just fund from the domestic savings pool. So the government could fund from the domestic savings pool and therefore have no have no longer the requirements or as many requirements to pay interest to foreign investors and therefore the CAD here would be reduced. And again the with a larger national savings pool they can use these national savings to actually pay off and their foreign debt and therefore move towards external stability. So that's how government discretionary measures can decrease the net interest repayments made overseas. So with the superannuation surcharge and with the superannuation guarantee, uh, we can see that the national savings pool can actually increase. Now let's look at how an increase level of savings can slow aggregate demand. So we know that we we'll just put this one here. Aggregate demand, as we talked about, is C plus I plus G plus X minus M. And naturally, for households, we can see that households with incomes can either spend or save. They can't do anything else with their income. They can either spend it or save it. That's the two options available to households. And if they choose to save more because of these um, superannuation policies and budgetary measures to actually encourage more savings, then they have less to spend. So we're going to put it down with our over there. So what this means is that when they spend less, this means they're consuming less as well. And because our, our marginal propensity to consume has decreased, we always assume that we're importing less as well because we we um, spend a proportion of our income on domestic made goods and services and as well overseas or foreign goods and services and we know that imports are a component of this balance on goods and services of our current account when we're importing less this means money is less money is flowing out of the economy. And similarly, by the same token, because we're spending less on domestic goods and services, we have more exportable surplus. 
So one of the major concerns about Australia is this very, very small export base because we have high labour costs, because we have very um, inefficient manufacturing sectors. The only thing we can export are our minerals and our raw materials. And because we're consuming less domestically, this means that we have a larger exportable base and more exportable surplus. And so, theoretically, this would mean that our exports here would increase. So as we know, when exports increase and imports decrease, we will see that the CAD or the current account deficit here would move towards a surplus. And by moving towards a surplus, it doesn't mean the current account deficit actually becomes a surplus, it means it's becoming a lower deficit. And this all contributes to this achievement of this goal of external stability, which is a low CAD, sustainable NFD, and stable dollar. So that's how budgetary measures to increase savings can actually achieve or help achieve this goal of external stability.